All right, let's do a quick check. Make sure all the straps are tight. That one could use a little tightening. That's good. All right, time to get on down the road and get to planting. Welcome to Piney Grove Hunt and Lease Edition. Today we're out here on our 1200 acre hunt and lease in Gulf County, and we're gonna put in some food plots. We got about uh, seven to nine acres that we normally put in plots, and I think we're gonna try and put in about uh, five or six. Uh, it's Monday. November 1st, uh, so we're hoping to get, uh, see how much we get done today. We got uh, Monday and Tuesday off of work, but uh, we got two days to get this done, so let's get to it. All right, Rob has arrived on scene with the Mahindra. Might remember that truck. That's the one that was stuck with the line buggy. All right, good morning, folks. We're about to get started here food plotting. We got Rob just rolled in. Um, like I mentioned as he rolled in, that uh, Nissan XD is a little cleaner than the last time you saw it on the line buggy. So that video should be up before this video. But we got to unload this Mahindra 1635, get it off the trailer, and then we've got to get the um, tiller off the back of my trailer back here and then get my ATV off and get the uh, spreader. The spreader I'm gonna use today is a Cabela's 2.0 ATV spreader. And uh, we've, we've tried different ones out there, Fimco and stuff like that, but the Cabela's ATV one is really, really good. Um, 2.0, had it a couple years and uh, it just works really well, high capacity and also has a lid on it. So when you're going over bumps, you don't, uh, you don't knock your seat all over the ground. But we're gonna get set up here, get these things hooked up and then talk about uh, how we're gonna get these food pots planted all right folks there's always something we tried to start the mahindra and uh, we couldn't get it started but, but what we found out we called the mahindra dealer and uh, he said make sure the pto switch isn't engaged which i had checked that but it also has, it has two pto switches a switch and a lever and uh, basically by trailering it it had put that you know kind of jostled that switch around and uh, made it so the tractor wouldn't start so we were able to uh, wiggle that handle that pto handle and get the tractor started, so we're back in business. But. All right, we're getting a little bit of a slow start today. We had uh, had some tractor issues that we worked through. Nothing wrong with the tractor, but, but what we're gonna put out here is we've got uh, some rye, some Renza Bruzy rye. We got about an acre pot. It's probably a little bit bigger than one acre, but we got 100 pounds of rye, 50 pounds of wheat, and 50 pounds of oats. So we're gonna put it in this Cabela spreader. I'm gonna spread it right across the ground that uh, Rob had bush hogged about three weeks ago, and then I sprayed with Gly about two weeks ago. So it's nice and dry and crispy, but I'm gonna spread the seed first. Rob's gonna till in that seed. That's gonna have a nice seed bed there. Then I'm gonna run and go get our colder packers with the ATV. We're gonna colder pack it after we've, um, after Rob has tilled it. And then we're gonna spread clover and chicory seed, which is a real small seed and can't go too deep in the ground. And then we're gonna colder pack it again. So we got two colder packers, one for the tractor and then one for the ATV. And we just want to keep both of these machines engaged because it's already 10 o'clock. You know, our wives are going to start blowing up our phones about, well, probably about four, but uh, we're probably not going to get out of here till dark, which is uh, about five o'clock. And then we got to do it all over again tomorrow. So we're going to figure out the mixture here. So we'll open up one bag of rye, one bag of wheat, and one bag of oats. So we're, we're training Rob today. He, he's from Northern Florida and it's country up there, but uh, he's no farmer, that's for sure. But uh, so on your tab on a, on a bag, it's always as you're facing the bag on the right side, you start from the right and you pull the tab and then you just pull the strand. 
and it zips it like a zip tie. So you're gonna have to cut the wheat and cut the oats. And what we wanna do is we'll pour together and we'll fill this bucket up and then fill the spreader up. So the biggest problem you have with this mixture is the oats have a long hole on them and they tend to get caught up in the spreader and then you don't spread it evenly. So we're gonna, we're gonna mix the oats and the wheat all at once into the bucket and then put them into the spreader. Yeah. All right, so you pour a little, I'll pour a little and then I'll grab the oats. It's not perfect, but this is to feed deer. They won't mind. <laughs> There's a little more oats in one area than the other. Okay, we just had to clear the tiller because it was bound up a little bit on one side, probably because he went along that woods line, but we cut off the, uh, the wrappings around the tiller. We're back in business. So just like I thought when I first started, the oats actually had bound up and wasn't allowing at least one of the holes in the, in the bottom of the spreader to flow. But once I got that hole opened up, it was fine. So um, just gotta make sure I don't put oats in the bottom. All right, that's load number two. It always takes a minute to get going, but we kind of got our system down now. Rob's tilling, got his speed figured out. He's away from the pine trees. When he was up against the pine trees, he was kind of hitting a few roots with the pine, with the uh, tiller. But uh, as he gets farther away, the pot's been tilled more, and uh, it's just more like a, a farmer's field. You, uh, you hear the Mahindra just steadily going along. We've cut around the bearings a couple times. It's not too bad for all the thatch that's there. It's mainly the onions. There's some onions at the end, and they're the ones that are wrapping around the tiller. But uh, I've spread out just about the four bags that he had. The oats were a problem. They kept binding up in the spreader, and I had to have to get out and stick my finger up into the uh, stick my fingers up into the hole there, and, and kind of clean them out and get the oats to flow. So it's imperative that we mix it going forward and uh, get it really mixed well, or else I'm gonna have that problem with all the pots. Normally, I'm not the guy that's spreading. Normally, I'm the guy in the tractor that's tilling. So, um, and so I have limited use with this spreader. We, we've been using it for years, or using a spreader like this for years, but uh, like I said, normally it's not me that's on the ATV. So uh, learning, a little bit of learning curve, but uh, we'll get that figured out. But the key is we've gotta mix that seed before we actually pour it in the spreader, because if you get, say, two or three inches of oats then the oats are gonna bind up and then you're running along and you're just spitting out a couple of seeds. Whereas I should be able to do this pot, you know, one or two passes, but it's taking me like six passes because uh, the, the spreader keeps getting clogged and I'm getting minimal seed flow. So that's the update. Uh, almost got this, well, this pot is seeded. We're probably halfway tilled. Um, it's gonna be a long day, but uh, we'll get this figured out and we'll, we'll be a little bit smarter and a little bit faster as we go. Okay, I came over to our equipment yard here and grabbing, and I'm grabbing the ATV Colta Packer. I've turned it upside down and I threw about 10 shots of grease into each pillow block bearing on the end. We designed this Colta Packer. Those uh, wheels are from a Colta, an old farm Colta Packer and uh, so is the axle, but the pillow box and all the other tubing and everything 
we purchased and we um we had someone weld it up for us so this is a homemade thing but it's a really really good piece of equipment for food potting uh, it'll pack that soil that's already there that rob is tilling and push those um grain seeds in and pack them nice and tight and it'll allow a nice firm bed to put the clover and the chicory seed and then we'll pack it again after that Okay, so I got his uh, the first pot completely cold to pack the first time. Well, not completely. He's still got a little bit of tilling left to do. But now I'm going to mix the clover with the chicory and put that in my solo front pack spreader and then start spreading that. And then when Rob gets done tilling, I'm going to show him how to use this front pack spreader. And then I'm going to go spread another plot. So this is what we have for small seed. We have some Patriot white clover. I think we got 10 pounds of that. And we got uh, five, five pounds of... Um, of chicory so we're going to mix these two together the chicory kind of acts like the oats do in the big spreader and kind of binds up the spreader so we'll mix this together and you just got to be constantly monitoring the output of the solo spreader to make sure that uh, you have seed coming off these wheels because um, this little flow gate down in there hopefully you can see that that flow gate down in there will get um, clogged with the chicory seed Okay, we got a nice mix of clover and chicory. The clover is the little bluish seed, and the chicory is the more brownish seed. So it's a good mixture there. Got the spreader full. We'll have plenty for this one acre. All right, folks, quick update on the day. It's about noon, probably about 1230. It took us about two and a half hours to get this plot completely done. That seed thrown on the ground and then tilled in, and then I cultivated it once with the ATV. Then I spread the small seed, the clover and the chicory. Then I cultivated it again. But uh, yeah, she's all done. It was about an acre. Uh, we're on to the next plot. Rob's already waiting. I got to get some seed spread so he can till it in. Okay, we're on pot number two and I got here and Rob had already tilled like almost as much as is tilled now, but I hadn't put any seed on the ground yet. And uh, when I ran up to him, he's like, man, I knew I forgot something. I uh, got the seed put on the ground where he had tilled and I put the rest out on this pot here. So this pot is seeded. He's tilling. This is working up real good. Um, this pot is a little bit drier, a little bit sandier, and that thatch is working up real good, real, real nice uh, seed bed. Uh, there's two more pots in this area. I'm going to go spread them with seed, keep Rob busy on the tiller, and then I'll come back and cold to pack this, right? So it's the same process. So it's seed on the ground, then till, then cold to pack, then small seed on the ground, then cold to pack again. So that's where we're at, pot number two. Uh, there's three pots in this area, but this is the biggest one. All right, folks, you can see in the background, Rob's finishing up the edges of the plot. I got the clover and chicory seed ready for the hand spreader. I've already cold packed this once, so I'm gonna spread out that little seed and run back over it real quick with the cold packer, and then this pot will be done. All right, so I got some uh, Durana clover, Patriot clover, and uh, they're both white clovers, and then chicory in here. Got it mixed together, and then I put my hand in front of here so that I can feel the seed coming out to make sure I don't put out too much because I need this to cover this whole pot. I'm definitely getting my steps in today. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this camera off. You don't need to see me walking back and forth this plot. But that's how you do it. After you cold a pack and lay out this little seed, little tiny clover, little tiny chicory seed, you can't really put it in a big spreader behind the ATV. I've still got to roll this pot out. I've spread the clover and chicory. I got to roll it out. But um, that's, that's pretty much the process. This is day one. We're gonna have to come back tomorrow and try and get the last two acres. It's taken us right around two and a half, three hours per acre, which sounds like a lot, but they're irregular shaped plots. There's a lot of backing forward. 
there's a lot of rob doesn't have a hydrostatic drive uh transmission so he's got to shuttle shift that um, i've got to roll it twice i've got to walk it once so there's a lot involved in this process but we only touched this land once once we planted this it's now november we won't touch it again until next november or october when we when we uh, brush hog it but we won't actually till it again until next november so this will feed uh, in a couple of weeks this pot will be green this will feed from mid-november all the way to about june july when the hot summer days of of uh, florida burn off the clover and sometimes that clover even persists we have some pots that that feed year round so we touch it once and uh th and that's it so it's a long day when we do it but we have to do it right we have to follow our process um, i will come back and fertilize this around christmas time frame and I may lime it because it hasn't been limed in a couple years, but I can throw that lime right on top of uh, the grains as they're coming up. But yeah, that's what I got for you today. Hopefully you enjoyed this content. Hopefully you enjoyed watching us do our food pots. We're gonna come back here again tomorrow. I'll record that. If it's the same thing, you won't see it again. Um, if it's new stuff, if we get into some predicament or uh, something looks interesting, then, then I'll post that video up as well as day two. But uh, this concludes my series of how I food pot. It starts with brush hogging, it goes to spraying, then it goes to putting the seed on the ground, till that seed in, then cold to pack, then put down your small seed, and then cold to pack again. Again, hopefully you liked uh, today's video. If you did, please give us a big thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you would, share with your friends, and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.